St. Kitts opposition legislators stage a walk out of parliament and in sport, West Indies cricketers to play a charity match to raise funds to rebuild stadiums in hurricane hit countries. I'm Nicole Best and this is the Caribbean in 10 for today, Wednesday, February 14. I'll be back with the details in just a moment. Tonight is great. Drinks and the girls look lovely, so it's all good. And why do you always come back here? Good setting, good vibes, good music, good people. It's a wonderful occasion. I think the turnout is good for the first month of the year. Everyone is supporting Mother Vibes, and that is a testament to the quality of the event. But today, Bitcoin is cool. What has changed? No, let me, let me start with the boss. Let me, let me, you're not a journalist. We're going to ask the questions, though. But let me start. What has changed? What's the difference today? Uh, well, today is, is, uh, it's more about the notoriety. It's about exposure. You know, we're on this hockey stick curve. You know, Bitcoin started out. Uh, actually, we're celebrating nine years this week uh, of Bitcoin. The white paper was uh, released uh, in uh, 2009. Legislators in St. Kitts and Nevis walked out of the Parliament yesterday, accusing Speaker Michael Perkins of attempting to stifle any criticism of the government. The walkout followed the Speaker's decision to suspend opposition legislator Norris Maynard for 10 days, that's Congress Maynard, for 10 days for the dishonorable conduct he displayed after being chastised for being in violation of the standing orders. But opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas charged that there is a concerted effort on the part of the government not to allow the opposition to speak on critical issues in the parliament. He said Maynard and another opposition legislator, Marcella Liebert, had given stolen presentations on the St. Christopher Air and Seaport Amendment Bill when the speaker took the action. The former prime minister said the fundamental questions raised by Liebert and Maynard in their presentations in the debate were whether the government was planning to sell the airport and the seaports to private entities. And he charged that it was because of the robust questions questioning from the opposition on those matters that the speaker took the action. In Jamaica, the zones of special operations Zozos in Mount Salem, St. James and Denham Town in the capital Kingston are to be extended for a further 60 days. The House of Representatives yesterday approved two resolutions requesting yet another extension. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who moved the resolutions, said the extension was justified given that there have been no reports of murder or gang-related serious crimes in either community since the zones of special operation were declared. He says gang activity has also decreased. Holness said the additional time is necessary for the intensified delivery of social services and infrastructure investment. The Prime Minister told legislators that those efforts have already begun to yield results, but, must be, but more must be done. Transition from the clear phase, which is a phase where we remove from the space the criminal element, we take in as much as we can the weapons and establish a security domain. Then we transition through the whole phase, which is the period of time that is necessary for the social intervention committee to come in and establish itself. This is the third time the Zozo has been extended in Mount Salem Zone, which was the first to become operational on September 1st, 2017. It is the second extension for Denham Town. As seen with the developments in Jamaica's House of Representatives yesterday, the government used its majority to crush changes to the Banking Services Act proposed by opposition member of parliament, Fitz Jackson. Finance Minister Audley Shaw says government wants to protect consumers, but most of the proposals were already covered in legislation passed by the previous and current administrations and a new law being studied. Jackson's proposals paid particular attention to banking fees. We too on this side are concerned about certain fees and excessive charges in the banking system. The question is how you deal with it in a manner 
that, 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 is, that is internationally acceptable and transparent. 30 government MPs voted against the bill, while the 29 opposition MPs voted in favor. Trinidad and Tobago's police say they have, got, they have so far detained 13 people as investigations continue into an alleged plot to destabilize carnival celebrations that ended last night. Acting Police Commissioner Stephen Williams says no one has been released and the number of detainees is growing. He said several properties had also been searched ever since authorities disclosed the alleged plot last Thursday. The family of one of the men detained has since sent a letter to Williams demanding his release. Last week, the Canadian, United States and British authorities issued statements warning their nationals to be wary of a terrorist threat in the Twin Island Republic, although local officials have shied away from referring to any terrorism in their discussion about the alleged plot. At least four people were killed in separate incidents during the carnival celebration, but a Authorities say they were not linked to the threat under investigation. Stay with us. Your midday sport is next. West Indies will take on an ICC Rest of the World 11 at Lords later this year to raise funds for the rebuilding of stadia in Dominica and Anguilla that were damaged by hurricanes Irma and Maria last year. The T20 scheduled for May 31st will be broadcast live on Sky Sport and has been sanctioned by the International Cricket Council as a full international. Cricket West Indies has partnered with the Melbourne Cricket Club and the England and Wales board to stage the match. CWI President Dave Cameron said the two hurricanes devastated parts of the Eastern Caribbean and CWI had been considering how it could best show support for the region in an impactful way. ECB Chairman Colin Graves said his board was always ready and willing to assist in the ongoing relief efforts in the region. Last September... Category 5 hurricanes Irma and Maria barreled through the Caribbean, leaving billions of dollars in damage and resulting in more than 50 deaths. Windsor Park, the test venue in Dominica, was badly affected after the country took a direct hit from Maria. Persistent rain forced the abandonment of the 30th match of the regional Super 50 between combined campuses and colleges Marooners and Trinidad and Tobago Red Force at Kensington Oval yesterday. The Group A day-night affair was scheduled to get started at 2 p.m., but heavy rains which swept across the country just after midday ensured players never took the field. Match officials eventually called time on the game at 16.30 p.m. Red Force had entered the contest second in the standings on 20 points, while Marooners were one from bottom on five points. Both teams gained two points from the no result. And that's Caribbean in 10. Join us at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. But until then, do have yourselves a good afternoon.